Hi, I'm Lee Tushler with Machine Design Magazine. We're here with Steve Sharp from Avago Technologies, and we're going to talk a little bit about encoder technology. Well, Steve, I think most engineers know that Avago is pretty good with, with uh, encoder module, but I don't think very many people know that you also put out housed encoders. Avago's been making um, encoder components and modules for probably over 20 years, but we also make uh, the complete housed or kit encoders um, for the customers that don't want to assemble them themselves. There's several different kinds of encoder technologies. What kinds of housed encoders do you guys do? Well, there's three major types, or actually the technology falls into three types of technology. First of all, there is uh, optical reflective, optical transmissive, and also magnetic. And then we sort of group those into three categories, uh, incremental encoders, absolute encoders, and panel mount. Can you give us an example of uh, what, something you do in incremental encoders? Sure. Two of our most popular families in incremental encoders are the AEDS 8000 series and the HEDS 5500-5600. And uh, so I'll show you some examples of each. Um, this little guy is uh, an AEDS 8000. Now it's a relatively small encoder. It's only 20 millimeters in diameter. So it can be used on a motor as small as 25 millimeters. It can go up to 500 counts per revolution uh, and has an operating frequency of 200 kilohertz. So it can be used on small motors that are spinning as fast as 32,000 RPMs. Uh, we find it used a lot in uh, equipment like uh, wafer handlers or automated pick and place machines. Uh, it's also got built-in differential line drivers. So they can drive uh, cables up to 4,000 feet long. Can you give us another example? Yeah, so the other most popular incremental encoder we make is uh, the HEDS 5500, 5600. So here's one example with the bottom plate removed. You can see the pieces. And also with the bottom plate on it. Now this family is our most uh, versatile and we have the most options available. You notice they're larger. If you remember that little 8000 series, these are used on motors typically over 40 millimeters in diameter. So they are physically larger. Um, one of the advantages is you can get this uh, in a whole range uh, of resolution from 50 counts per revolution all the way up to 1,024. So, and it also operates at 100 kilohertz, so it can handle motors that are running faster, where you don't need as much resolution, or motors that are turning slower, where you want a lot more fine uh, gradation. Now, in fact, these two examples, uh, one of them is a metal code wheel, and the other is a mylar code wheel. The metal ones uh, obviously can handle higher temperature, but if you want to go up to 1,000 or 1,024 uh, counts per revolution, you go to the Mylar code wheel, it's, it has much finer uh, resolution capability. And then we also make it, uh, in this version with the uh, pigtail cable, is uh, the line driver version. So that has the differential RS422 line drivers uh, right inside. And again, with line drivers, you can drive a 4,000 foot cable. And so the perfect applications for the, uh, the HEDS 5500 uh, and such are uh, equipment such as um, stepper motors, uh, manufacturing equipment, uh, textile machines, things where you often have motors turning slower, but you need a lot of accuracy as you're positioning a conveyor or an arm or, or that type of equipment. When you're talking about encoder modules, you have a lot of flexibility. What type of options do you have with housed encoders? Well, with housed encoders, uh, a lot of the options fall down into the broad categories of either resolution, uh, temperature range, uh, output format, whether it's line driver or not, uh, or even mounting uh, configuration. So here's another uh, family. These are uh, reflective encoders as opposed to transmissive. They are also incremental. This is the HEDR5400 series. Now you notice one of these is just round, so it would be mounted directly to the bottom of the motor, potentially with adhesive, or it can be available with mounting ears. So if you had a large system, maybe not just a motor, but you want to mount this to the system, you can get it with mounting ears as well. Now, the 5400s uh, are not quite as sophisticated as the, uh, the 55, 5600s we looked at. So these are relatively low resolution. Uh, they only go up to 200 counts per revolution, and they're only rated at 15 kilohertz. So they're used in much slower operating equipment, but they're smaller and a lot less expensive than those other encoders we looked at before. So for something like a vending machine, where that little screw is not turning very fast, these are perfect. You also have encoders that look like potentiometers. Can you tell us about those? Well, yeah, before I, I go to the, uh, the, the pots, I wanted to bring up uh, another technology we have. 
Uh, this is the AEAT 6000. Now you notice this one doesn't have anything in it. You don't see a code wheel or anything to mount on the shaft. But this is a magnetic encoder. Now being magnetic, uh, a little bit newer technology, um, it's sealed. So it's very impervious to any sort of environmental conditions like dust or moisture or contamination. In this case, this would mount over the motor and on the end of the shaft would be affixed the magnet. Now this version is actually an absolute version. So this has information directly upon power up. So if you've got a piece of equipment uh, such as a, um, well, anywhere that you need uh, absolute position of an arm or a, a motor, you don't want to wait for it to start turning, an absolute encoder is the way to go. Now the magnetic ones are also available incremental, but uh, people use these where you have to know that position of that robotic arm immediately when power is turned off or turned on. You can't wait for it to start moving. Now you mentioned the ones that look like potentiometers. Now you probably had some things like this in your equipment many years ago, right? Now these are digital rotary pulse generators. Now the one you're turning there doesn't have any resistance. But if you were to take this one and try to turn it, it has little detents, kind of like I have on the knob on my car stereo. Uh, these are perfect anywhere you need to get digital information in relation to somebody turning a knob. So they're basically a replacement for that old carbon potentiometer, but they're digital pulse uh, encoders, mount to the panel, you get digital information, and you won't have to worry about the, the carbon wiper wearing out or getting dirty and, and scratchy anymore. Thanks, Steve. That's a great overview. Viewers can get more information at the Avago website, www.avagotech.com, backslash coders.